We're going to call our meeting to order. It's uh, Wednesday, February 15th. The time is 7 p.m. This is the recessed meeting of the Nags Head Board of Commissioners. Our first item is the adoption of an agenda. Move is presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. Our next item is audience response. This is the time that we set aside for the public to come speak to the board. And we we'll no open. <laughs> we have no public. I, I don't see a lot of public out there, but we'll give them a shot anyway, just in case. <laughs> uh, anybody that wishes to come speak? Seeing none, we'll move on. And item D, the approval of the Gulf Street Tank Repiping Mixer Project. Mr. Clark. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Um, this evening, I'm here to talk to you about a project that was included in the adopted budget for this year for water operations. However, the reason why it's back here again, uh, in addition to being approved in the budget, is because when bids were received, the bids came in at a higher amount than what had been budgeted. Uh, as, as a way of background, uh, in December of 2013, we're facing new, much more stringent federal regulations dealing with uh, a compound called trihalomethanes, which are a family of chemicals that include chloroform and other chemicals that form in the water when you have organic carbon material and then you add chlorine to it, which is pretty typical for most water systems around the country to disinfect the water, to kill the bacteria. But it creates these unwanted chemicals and as it turns out, the water that we receive from Dare County that comes from their Skyco plant on Roanoke Island uh, has a lot more of this volatile organic carbon material in it than the water that we receive from the reverse osmosis plant in Kill Devil Hills. So basically this problem that we're trying to combat is present in the southern part of town and because we serve all the way to Oregon Inlet, the Coast Guard Station, the fishing center and the campground down there, that area is where the water when it's finally consumed has been in our system the longest amount of time. It's what they call the highest residence time. And so this project is intended to begin uh, a process, hopefully by making uh, some steps now. We may or may not have to do some additional work in the next fiscal year. This may be enough. But what we're proposing to do is, is two things at the Gulf Street tank. The half million gallon ground storage tank at the Gulf Street pump station across from the entrance to Tanger Outlet Mall. Um, the way it was designed and built many, many years ago, several decades ago, is that the same pipe that the water goes in is the pipe that the water comes out, which is an inefficient way to turn the water over, to get the water to circulate in the tank. Um, and so part of this project is to repipe the Gulf Street tank so that water goes in a new pipe that will be put in the side and then the existing pipe will be used for the water to go out. So the water will have to go through the tank before it goes through the pumps into South Nags Head. The other component of this project is to install a mixer inside the tank. Um, it is a phenomenon that all water tanks suffer from, uh, particularly in the summertime when the water inside gets hot, is that the hot water rises to the top, the cold water settles to the bottom, and you don't get good circulation. The water that, that comes in and goes out is all at the bottom and so the water at the top stays there for quite a while before you have a large demand that causes that tank uh, to that water at the top to get used up. Unfortunately these THMs, these trihalomethanes, love warm water and so that warm water at the top of the tank is where they like the, where they're most apt to form. So by putting a mixer in this tank uh, and, and studies of the type of mixer that we're proposing to install show that if you could turn one on in a tank that's completely stratified temperature wise in about three to four hours you've got a tank that's completely mixed and the temperature at the top is virtually the same as the temperature at the bottom. These mixers uh, use about two hundred dollars worth of electricity a year and they're very efficient in the vortex as it were that they set up to get this water mixed. Um, <clears throat> staff, uh, after we opened these bids and, and saw how they compared to the amount that had been approved in the budget, we discussed a number of options. Uh, we thought about splitting the project up and only doing the mixer this year and maybe postponing the piping work till next fiscal year. Uh, the problem with that is it, we need a summer and a winter to test 
this fix to determine if it's going to be sufficient or if we may possibly need to install next year a mixer in the South Nags Headwater Tower as well to try to get our water quality down to where it, it, it needs to be or up to where it needs to be. Um, and if we were to postpone part of this work until the fall, then we would only have next summer to test that portion of the project, leaving us with about three and a half months from the end of the summer till December of 2013. And that's really not an adequate time frame to get something designed, permitted by the state, because this would have to receive a permit from the state, and then bid and then built. Um, if we have this summer and uh, next fall to test out this proposed fix, um, as I said, it may turn out that it'll be sufficient and the water quality down at Oregon Inlet will meet the standards that are coming into effect in 2013. In addition to what we're proposing to do, we've had discussions with Dare County water folks and they are looking seriously at changing the way they treat their water at Skyco. Uh, they have a treatment system in place that's been there for several years that is it's kind of like a water softener. It's what's called ion exchange and it takes these organic carbons out of the water and puts something else in their place that does not combine with chlorine and create these bad substances. Um, but they cannot tell us a time frame right now. That is not something that has been approved in a county budget, so we don't know when that fix uh, may actually be installed. Uh, so we really, and, and ultimately, if we have a problem with our water at Oregon, even if it's due in part to the water we're getting from Dare County, we're still obligated uh, and responsible for that water and would have to go to public notification in the media if we didn't meet the new standard that goes into effect in less than two years. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that members of the board may have. Questions for Mr. Clark? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Dave, if we encouraged Oregon Inlet to really run their water, would that drain the pipes enough to flush it? We have flushing devices. We have a flushing device at the fishing center, which is virtually at the end of the line, that comes on automatically and runs for several hours every night. So we're already trying to freshen the water in the portion of the system between the southern end of town and Oregon Inlet by you know, dumping a lot of water on the ground and into the, into the inlet to try and keep that water turned over. But even with that effort, and um, they recently replaced the water system in the National Park, uh, something we had been trying to get them to do for several years, but one of the things that was a factor in their getting funds from the federal government, from the Interior Department, they had to go from a six inch line to an eight inch line. So now there is a, a measurably more water in that system between the South Nags Head Tower and Oregon Inlet that we're, we're trying to combat with our flushing devices uh, to the extent that we can. And the other question I have is, you're recommending the highest bid, 138. Why would you not want to mix solar power with grid connection for that, 133? And uh, you have that, a green feature. Uh, there are two factors that are involved here. Um, if you, if you look at the uh, bid sheet that our engineer sent to us, at the bottom of the page, there are some little circles that uh, on our, uh, the low bid, Schulte's, that we're recommending, uh, there's a two and a one and a two that are circled. On the other bid, all ones are circled. Two is a solar B, which is a solar powered um, mixer. One is a PAX mixer. Uh, the reason why the grid only option that, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute too, why we're recommending that. The, the reason why that's more expensive is because it's a better pump. It has a longer life and it's more efficient. Uh, Kill Devil Hills put two of these that we're uh, specifying in their two elevated storage tanks uh, about a year, year and a half ago. And they are achieving excellent mixing results in those two elevated tanks, the one at 8th Street and the one up uh, just south of the Dare, uh, Dare Center. But um, the, when the state reviewed this set of plans before they issued a permit for it, they expressed some serious concerns about the stability of the solar panels on the top of the tank where we are subject to the type of winds that we're subject to down here. Uh, this tank, you can't drill a hole in it. It's a crom tank, which is a concrete tank with reinforcing steel bands in it, and you cannot drill holes through it without 
impacting the stability of the tank. So they would have to use some type of epoxy to glue it onto the top of the tank. And the state was very dubious about whether or not it would be feasible to get these solar panels to stay on the top of that tank. A footnote would have saved my question. I'm sorry. Dave, can you tell us what the current THM parameters are? Okay, and what exactly. What they're changing to? Um, the, the, the THM target that you're supposed to do better than is 80 parts per trillion, which I know sounds like a pretty small number. But the way the standard reads right now, we take what's called a running annual average. We take samples at several locations every three months throughout town, and then we average all those results together, and the number that you get when you average all the results is what we report to the state. And as long as that aggregate of all our sampling sites, four quarters in a row, is below that .08, um, parts per million or 80 parts per trillion, then we're good, we're fine. But starting in December of 2013, each location has to stand on its own. So while we have really good results at the north end of town, we're not gonna be able to average those good results with the higher results down at Oregon Inlet. Oregon Inlet and the other sites we have will have to stand on their own and be below that 80 parts per trillion average on, on an annual basis. And while two, two, of the th two or three samples may be under that number, historically, we have gotten each year at least one reading that was above that level. And again, under the current reporting requirements, we're okay, we're in good shape. But when December 2013 comes, we can't use our good samples, our lower value samples at the north end of town to average out the ones in the south end. I'm sorry. Just one sample is above? If one sample is above... No, I mean, your historical data is just... Well, we've had, we've had some years where two out of the four quarters exceeded that, but the other two, plus the ones in the northern part of town, brought that average down to where our reporting level, uh, the number we report, was in the acceptable range. But where you typically have your highest THMs is in the south end. That's right. Town. At, at, at Oregon Inlet, um, at the fishing center, in, in that area, because again, that's where the water has been in the system the longest before it comes out of the tap and we sample it or it's consumed. Now, I mean, I, I know that there are people out there hearing this that are thinking, you know, we've got a problem with our water. This substance, this t these THMs, the level has been set based upon drinking whatever the average human consumption is, two or three liters of water a day for 70 years. And if you do that, then there is a statistically significant increase in the probability of your getting certain types of cancers. We all know that the primary users of water in south, at the south end of our system are people who are here for a week at the campground or people who occasionally use the fishing center. So that, again, this is not a, a, a serious health threat in the minds of most people in the water industry. However, the federal government has decided in their infinite wisdom to make the standard more strict and therefore you know, we have to comply with it or we have to notify our consumers that we missed the mark, if we do miss the mark. And the change is, is not making it less than 80 parts per exactly. trillion. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's, what is that in parts per billion, Dave? Is that 0 .08 <laughs> parts per billion? Something like that. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's I a mean, really small. Right? It, it, it almost, I, 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 I believe that this is one of those standards where um, they couldn't lower the standard for several years, even though some health experts believe that it should be lower because there weren't machines or equipment available to measure it in that small quantities. But now they can, so now they've lowered the standard. Well, they've changed the way they measure the standards, what I heard you say. Changed the way we report our results, basically. It's a reporting change rather than a change. They haven't dropped what they consider to be a safe level. They've just said now each of your sampling sites has to stand on its own. It can't be uh, averaged in with the rest of your sampling sites. And I believe that we have four in town that we sample from regularly. And do you know if Dare County has similar issues? In the, they, they do have similar locations. They do have similar issues. And uh, 
one of the things that they're going to have to be concerned about as they expand their distribution system on Roanoke Island is they're going to have portions of their system over there where water is going to be in the system longer than it's been in the past because they're 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 moving outward in their you know moving south into Wanchis and then moving up north to the northern part of Roanoke Island and it is and, and that you know this is just pure speculation, but that may be what ultimately will prompt them to change the way they treat their water. And then if they change the way that they treat their water, does that have the potential of reducing it does. our potential? It does. Regions? It has. It has. I mean, um, the, the treatment method that they have now during the wintertime, pretty much all their water goes through it. But in the summertime, when Skyco is operating at its maximum output, they can't put all the water that they can produce over there through that particular treatment uh, scheme. And so they split the water. Some of it goes through the, the VOC removal. Some of it doesn't. And then they mix the two back in at the, at the end of the plant before it goes out into the system. And so the average content is greater than what it would be if it was all being treated. And they, I mean, they know this has been a problem. And what will happen to them if they don't do anything by December of 2013? They'll have the same report. They'll have the same. They'll have to go to public notification if they start getting individual sites that can't meet the standard for four quarters in a row. And so they'll have to re report to everybody on the Deer County water system? Will that include our residents? They would only be responsible for reporting to people who they directly serve. Uh, Nag said and Kill Devil Hills, who buy our water from Dare County and then serve it to our customers, are responsible for the quality of the water when we serve it to our customers. If for some, by some stroke of luck or, or something that we're doing right, if, if we say do this project and we're able to improve our water quality to the point where at Oregon Inlet it meets the standard, but they have problems over on Roanoke Island, then they'll have to go to public notification. <clears throat> they also serve all the way up as far as Duck. And I don't know exactly, again, because they have a water plant in Kill Devil Hills that does not have this problem the way the Skyco plant does. They may not have to notify those people who are on water that's coming from the RO plant that does not have the THM problem. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to beat this horse to oh, death, no. but I am interested. Sure. In it. Um, if are there, how much are we missing it by in South Nags Head if we take this action and spend $130,000? Is there any assurance that we will be able to meet the standards? There is no assurance, but I feel reasonably sure that if we do nothing, then it's not going to get any better. And these are steps that have been recommended to us by two different consultants that we have, if, that we have employed for over the last couple of years and taken a look at what we could do to improve the situation at Oregon Inlet. And both of these things were highly recommended. They have been successful in other places where, com where communities have done this, uh, improved the flow. Because see, the way the piping is at Gulf Street right now, it's possible for water to go to South Nagset and never go through that tank. The pumps take it directly from Dare County's main and send it right on out. And while they're doing this, if the amount of water we're getting from Dare County exactly meets the demand in South Nagset, then the water in that tank sits there for significant periods of time before it actually gets drawn out and used. And of course, the longer it stays in that tank, the, the lower the quality is. The repiping is going to set up a situation where all the water that Gulf Street pumps out to South Nags Head and on to Oregon Inlet will go through that tank. And with the mixer, it will now be very well mixed. and It'll be a homogeneous product when it comes out of that tank instead of being one that's had these temperature layers that, that are not good for water quality. And you mentioned adding one to the South Nags Head Tower? Well, I, I was talking to Nancy about this today, that it would be my recommendation to include funds in next year's budget to put a mixer in that tank if this project and if Dare County comes through and changes their treatment and we are hitting the mark as a result of this, then there'd be no need to put that mixer in. I mean, it's not something that we would do if we don't need it. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Clark? Comments? 
What do y'all think we should do? Well, I make a motion to authorize the finance officer transfer of funds to well, two motions, I guess. Transferring funds you know, not to exceed forty-eight thousand dollars for water out of, out of uh, water uh, runnings without the construction of Gulf Street tank repiping mixer project, and authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with uh, E.C. Schultz, Carolina, for an amount of one hundred thirty-eight thousand six hundred fifty dollars. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Discussion? I'm going to take a stab at it. I, I, I feel like there are a couple of potential resolutions to this. Um, one is we spend $150,000 and then maybe another $150,000 on the South Neggs head piece. Um, Another is to, to see if Dare County can fix the water that they're sending to us and see what they do with their their part of the bargain. Um, and the other is that they change the, they don't change the rules when they say they're gonna change the rules because sometimes that happens. That's just what I've seen occasionally. Um, this just doesn't seem like a serious health issue to me. I'd rather have us wait and see, but that's personal. I, I would I would point out that if we if we do this and, and, and decide that we need to tweak it a little bit more, the cost to put a mixer in the South Next Head tank would not be this much because there would be no repiping required down there. So that component would not be part of the project. It would just simply be installing a mixer in that tank, um, which can be done for probably sixty sixty five thousand dollars something in in that neighborhood yes, sir. probably about half of what this project would be because this project involves um, cutting a hole through that tank that only the manufacturer can do uh, nobody else can do that and um, there's only a very narrow band around the sort of the equator of that tank where you can actually cut through it because there's no steel bands in that area but it's a tricky it's a tricky process but that would not be necessary at the south nag said tank and just one more question. Sure. I'm sorry, you're sampling down at Oregon Inlet, correct? Right. So it's not necessarily a South Nags Head problem. It's more of an Oregon Inlet. Well, we problem. we have a sampling point at Pelican Park that we've also taken some samples from over the years, and it it they have come back high too. Not as high as Oregon Inlet on a consistent basis, but we've seen individual samples that were above the the. 0.08 amount. So, I mean, it's not as consistent and, and as prevalent, but it does occasionally happen there as well. And, I mean, give me an example. Are we talking about 50 parts per trillion instead of 8 parts per trillion? Or? Well, no, it's, it's, it's in the neighborhood of, of probably 90, I mean, 80 versus 90 or 95. I mean, it, 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 it's a violation. And, I mean, it, the, the state doesn't care whether you bust it by one part per billion or 10 parts per billion. If you're over the limit, then public notification is what you have to do. Thanks, sir. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'd just like to say I'm, I'm not in favor of spending the money either, but I think it's a necessity. Uh, I think if we have the money in the water fund, and it, it, it's really and truthfully, if you're waiting for somebody else to correct the problem, you're sadly mistaken. That's not it's our water system we're responsible for. Let's fix it if we can. If we can't fix it, we're at 138,000 dollars. But a consultant, I'm sorry, but the consultants have recommended it be done that way. I, like I said, I'm not to be fair to spend that money, but that to be done. I'm sorry. Water quality is a pretty important issue, and if we already know that we don't meet the testing standards in one part of town. I'm not sure how frequently that is, if that's annually, if it occurs once or twice annually or what. Um, I, I think that's a pretty important. Um, and sometimes, you know, even though we may think that, yeah, it's a little high, but it's not too high, and it may not cause cancer for somebody, there's still the, the public perception, which is, which is important. Dave, when does Dare County do to come online with the Roanoke Island project? I I honestly don't know what their timetable is. I know that they're still, you know, 
well under construction. Um, but I don't know what their time frame is for build out when they anticipate that they're going to put the whole system into operation, both going into Wanchis as well as going up north. I'm happy to see it. Yeah, I'm very happy to see it. May I ask? Yes, ma please. Have, a question. Have, have there been discussions with Dare County about Skyco? Or? Well, as, as recently as three weeks ago, we had a meeting with them where they told us about some modifications they were making in the way that they were sending the water out of the plant. It's not a new treatment system. Um, and I, 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 would, I would say that this, the way that they treat the water right now is, it hasn't been in place that long. And again, it's a lot more complicated than a water softener, but basically it operates on the same principle. It's called ion exchange. It's where you're taking something out of the water and putting something else in its place. And the material that you put in that uh, ion exchange um, generator or that, that device is a resin, and that resin gets used up. Eventually, it doesn't have anything more to give, so it's not taking anything more out of the water, and it has to be replenished, just like you have to replace the salt in a water softener. Um, and there have been times when, due to budget constraints, they were not replacing that as often as it needed to be replaced. So again, um, you know, we get our water from Dare County, and we're very dependent upon how well they treat it, but we don't have any control over their budgetary constraints whenever they may uh, impact their ability to treat the water. And uh, ultimately, we're at their mercy, but ultimately, we're the ones who are responsible at the end of the pipe when somebody turns that tap on, and whatever that water is when it comes out, if it's in Nags Head, we're the ones that are responsible for it. Dave, I would beg to differ with you about that budgetary constraint. According to the contract, Kill Devil Hills, Nags Head, and um, Dare County all pay for the parts that are needed for the Skyco plant. It's well, I, 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 I have no doubt that that's in the contract, but there have been times when we know for a fact that they have not been able to replace that, that medium in their treatment facility when it needed to be replaced. And it, you know, it had an adverse effect on the quality of the water that we were getting. You know, I, just, I wish I had a good way to graphically show what 80 parts per trillion is. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is just one of those standards that's kind of ridiculous and that changing the way that they calculate it is uh, our water quality today is the same as it would be a year from now. They're just changing the way that they calculate it. The way that we report it, right. Yeah. Further discussion, y'all? Sorry, we beat with <laughs> Okay. I apologize, I beat this one to death. All those in favor of the motion, please signify it by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign, aye. Uh, the motion passes three to one. Thank you. Next item. If I could yes, sir. Um, introduce this item. The uh, Back in December 7th, this I came before you and asked for, uh, well, actually we had it on a budget adjustment as part of a consent agenda transfer of funds for repair or replacement of the um, roof at Town Hall and the roof at Station 16 because of uh, Hurricane Irene damage. Um, we, had, we took that off, um, the, the board authorized that transfer, but you, we did not, you did not authorize the contract to authorize the transfer amount. The reason this item is back before you is because upon further review, we determined that the two of the bidders were not general license contractors that bid on this project and they were um, the project exceeded the $30,000 threshold, which in, which requires a general license contract to be in place. So that's why this, and I apologize for that, and that, but that's why this item is back before you. So they were disqualified? Yes. And the proposed amount from Gallup. Correct. And Dave can fill in. Right. I mean, it, and the, both of these contractors had done roof work in this area before, but they had done it as a subcontractor to a general contractor. They had not bid on a project of this scope uh, on their own, and um, I think both of them are now encouraged to go ahead and go through the process and get their contractor's license, but they, they were not able to be awarded a contract for this work, either of the two low bidders. So as a result, um, what you have before you is, a, I believe Kim indicated that it would be $8,495 for both roofs combined, increase. increase, 
right over and above the original amount and I would point out that the, the original amounts that were um, approved back in December did include a small amount of repair work to each of the two roofs uh, that was done immediately after the hurricane to make sure that until the replacement took place there weren't any leaks or anything that were going to cause any damage um, but but that that amount is included in the overall uh, request that you have before you questions for mr. Clark I do have two items the, the I hope we put something in place that makes sure that we don't overlook the fact that they didn't have the qualifications to bid on the job absolutely um, and second I hope we get a warranty on the roof um, there are 30 or 40 year warranties on yes. available on roofs and not not so much the fire station but the, the town, town hall roof seems like it, we should have gotten more life out of it right and and these are I, I i don't know what the shingles that were on the building when it was new were rated at but these are 130 mile an hour rated shingles which is i believe is an increase to the standard that's taken place within the last several years follow up on the mayor's question are we getting a warranty yes we are okay i just wanted that. and the other question is if we turn down this and put it out for rebid is that in danger or create a problem for the bit person that was the parent low bidder? If he doesn't qualify. <coughs> no, if, if the qualified bidder, there's only one out of three that was qualified. There were if we were to say rebid it, does that create a liability problem for us or for them? I would have to research that to give you a definitive answer, but I, I, my snap answer is no. Um, under these circumstances because the entire process is thrown out by you selected a bidder who was not qualified. Um, there, there were a total of four bidders on the town hall roof, two of whom were licensed in North Carolina. There was a, there was a higher bidder than the one that is on, on your agenda for tonight. It was even above that that is also a licensed contractor in the state of North Carolina. May I ask one more question? Sure. Stain, stainless steel versus copper. There's, there is a significant savings, about, um, I believe it's about something in excess of $5,000. That's the difference in the material cost. Well, but and, and copper, in, I mean, it's been my experience that copper down here holds up a heck of a lot better than stainless steel does, but y'all have had different experience on that. The cost of, the cost of materials, I think, is you spend on good materials because you're putting it up there for hopefully a long time. I guess is where I am. I think that's maybe one of those false savings where you get a product that's it's got a lifespan of 20 years instead of 40 years, and you save 5,000 bucks. But again, I'm, I'm asking, did y'all look at that piece of it? The, the difference between how long copper lasts versus how long stainless steel lasts? In conversation with the contractors that took a look at the roof, they determined that some of the copper components that are up there now would have to be replaced. Um, and their recommendation was not to put copper back, was to go with stainless steel based on their experience. Um, some, some of the copper they could reuse, but it would only be part of it, and the rest would have to be replaced with something new. And I mean, had the copper corroded through? Or? Well, it, it had deteriorated to the point where they didn't feel comfortable putting it back down on top of a new roof. That they felt like you're better off starting out with new components uh, particularly if they're going to give you a warranty on it, they want to make sure that the materials are all of, of you know, the same age so that they can feel confident that they're going to last a significant amount of time and a certain portion of the system is not going to fail. And how long a warranty are they giving you? I believe it's, these are 20, at least 20 years. Other questions for Mr. Clark? I'm sorry that our deductible on our insurance is so high. It cost us so much money. I mean, the, that roof, ever since the town hall was built, not well, just the fire station, but the town hall was built, has it's been through it's been through several storms, several issues. Whether or not you know they were rated properly, rated uh, shingles or whatever, I always had a. a, a I mean, I like the town hall to be wrong, but I never liked that roof design. I, uh, my 
think open is half it's great more problems than, than the, but again that's just me I think that the weather on you know here close to the ocean and wind uh, and the storms that we've had I don't think we have any choice and Gallup is a, is a notable roofing company. I don't have any doubts that they'll do an excellent job. Uh, we do need to have at least a 20-year, 25-year rent, whatever it is. So one of us will have to work on it. Well, most of us will. Other comments, questions? Ready for motion? <coughs> so move, uh, move to, uh, let me see. We would accept Gallup's proposal. Uh, is, is it Gallup for both groups? It's authorize a finance officer to transfer the necessary funds. Yeah, I'm looking for that. I just had it. Recom uh, uh, move the board. Let me see. To authorize a finance officer to transfer funds to to replace the Hurricane Irene damage roof from Town Hall and a portion of the roof from Station 16 also needed for replacement. The cost of Town Hall, uh, town hall roof is $46,000 and for Station 16 is $24,540. Authorize the town manager to enter into the contract for contracts uh, for the replacement of the roof of Town Hall and the flat roof on the northeast corner of Station 16. Thank you, sir. Mayor, may I make a suggestion? Please, sir. You raised a good point about catching this problem with uh, licensing. One thing you could do is require on the bid documents that each contractor provide you with his license number to the North Carolina Licensing Board of General Contractors. And then it's just a simple matter of a click, enter the number on the North Carolina General Licensing Board's website, which is very user-friendly. We use it all the time, and you can check it quickly. See if that license is active and current and Correct. good standard. And Mike Brown, who is the uh, investigator for this area, is very helpful. Uh, and he's a cell phone call away. We deal with him all the time. Thank you, sir. As a matter of fact, as soon as we determined that the, that the apparent low bidder was not licensed, I immediately began checking on the other three, and that's how I determined that the second low bidder was also not licensed in North Carolina, because that website is very user-friendly. Nice thing too, when you require that number on your bid documents, you probably won't even draw bids from people who are trying to skirt up on the thirty thousand dollar limit, hoping they'll be under it. That may be scared off. I'll second the motion with the proviso that there be a minimum of a twenty year warranty in writing that we haven't seen yet. We have a motion, and we have a now that's. That's a second with a proviso. I'm not sure. Is that okay with the motion? <laughs> sure, absolutely. I, I mean, if, it, if you want to change it to put it in the motion, that's fine. I don't change it. That's good. Thank you. I totally agree. Sounds good. Further discussion, y'all? All those in favor of the revised motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. <coughs> the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item F, consideration of resolution appointing review officers. Ms. T. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the state of North Carolina has a subdivision process that goes through land records of Dare County. Whenever someone files a plat in Dare County, uh, a review officer has to sign off on that plat. In Dare County, local municipalities are appointed as review officers for the county. Um, we realized a few weeks ago that uh, Tim Wilson is still listed as one of the review officers for the county and I am not. So this resolution before you will actually add my name and take Tim's off uh, so that we can, uh, so, so that I can sign off on plats along with the other town review, review officers. So. Questions for Ms. T? Make a motion that we approve the resolution appointing review officers as presented. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item G. Uh, items referred to in presentations from the town attorney. There are uh, a couple of items. 
the real property acquisition items and uh, to discuss <coughs> potential litigation. And we would uh, suggest and request that you go into closed session to discuss those two items. Yes, sir. Mr. Manager? Okay. Um, the, the, let's see, the first thing is uh, something that probably would have been put on the consent agenda if we had one tonight, but it's a housekeeping matter, uh, cleaning up the uh, personnel policy in relationship to awards for employees' uh, service. Uh, it's come to our attention that we can no longer, as a municipality, purchase savings bonds from the U.S. Treasury. What we've done in the past is given employees the opportunity to uh, for 10 years of service, the choice of a $75 savings bond or a gift certificate. Um, in order for the employee to secure that savings bond, we're going to have to give them, the, if they so choose we give them the gift card, then they turn around and buy it themselves. So this just simply cleans that up um, and it, it changed the 30, $37.50 uh, to $40 um, just to make it more even, I guess. And, uh, 10 years of service, it would change it, uh, take out the choice uh, for the $75 savings bond, and then so forth and so on for 15 years and 20 years of service. Questions, Mr. Dockman? We, do, we, do, we have a thing in the action? It's personnel policy, so you. Okay. Entertain a motion? Make a motion that we adopt the manager's proposal. Second. Have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the um, wanted to ask Elizabeth to come up and give you a uh, brief update uh, in summary as where we are in the process of um, trying to come back before you with a recommendation for um, digital signage um, that'll that'll be coming back probably at the April meeting. Ma March. March. We hope. Thank you. Uh, yes, you may have been hearing from some of your constituents regarding digital signage, particularly at the Outer Banks Mall. Um, and Cliff asked me to just sort of walk you through a timeline to explain where we are and what the procedure is. Because we don't want the public to feel like the town is holding up a process or a particular application. We are not. Uh, back in September, staff went to the planning board and asked for their guidance regarding digital signage in the sign ordinance. A text amendment was initiated. We began working on that. We brought forward some text amendments to the planning board. Um, the planning board actually made a recommendation um, to eliminate digital signage and actually kind of tighten up our digital signage uh, regulations, um, such as they were. And then we came to this board. And over the course of two meetings, there was much discussion related to digital signage and how to handle it within our ordinance. Um, this was a particular case where there were some last minute changes on the, you know, as the meeting was going that we tried to create some ordinance language and it required a second reading. At the time of the second reading, um, we actually went back to the planning board's recommendation, made a motion on that, and this board directed the planning board and staff to continue work on that and come back again. So staff has been in that process. Uh, Roberta up here has a sort of a timeline for you. You can walk through it. Maybe if you go up to September, you can kind of see. Um, so un unfortunately, I think for some of the business owners who were hopeful that they might be able to get a digital sign as part of the mall sign, um, they found themselves in a, in a process that has taken several months. Um, but this process is not specific to their sign. It's, it's about whether or not and how this town will allow, allow digital signage in any form. So um, what we've been doing is uh, we, we hired, we didn't hire anybody, but we, we hired our planning board members, our consultants from the planning board who worked with staff to put together a meeting with stakeholders. We did have a lot of members, a lot of business owners who were at the mall um, we have businesses at the mall participate in that meeting. Uh, we're working on some text right now to bring forward to the planning board next week. We hope to have a, another recommendation for you from the planning board regarding digital signage at your March meeting. Um, at that point, uh, then we could, um, depending on what 
this board decides accept applications based on new regulations. But I do want to be clear that going back to September, uh, digital signage, except for digital signage that alternated time and temperature, such as you see at the bank, and, and we've got one that has this, the ECB bank, um, is prohibited, and it's expressly prohibited. And I know that in the past there have been a couple of instances where some zoning interpretations have been made uh, to allow digital signage in certain instances, but unfortunately the ordinance never caught up with those interpretations. And um, my concern is for emerging technologies that are coming onto the market. We're seeing a lot of plasma screens, LCDs. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of ways digital signage can be incorporated into, uh, you know, wall signs or town signs, and we want to make sure that we're staying in character and in step with your goals through the land use plan. So that's, that's where we are in the process. Again, we hope next month to come back with, to you with a recommendation from our planning board again. But I wanted to make sure you had a chance to see sort of the history of this work and to understand that um, this really isn't just about the Outer Banks Mall sign, although I, I know they do want a digital sign, um, but we're certainly uh, trying to work with them through the process to find something that will work maybe both for them and for the town. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Questions from Ms. T? Thank you. Thank you for the yeah. 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 Sure. Okay, um, Next is a request for a change order that was presented to us by Carolina Marine Structures, their request for the ocean outfall um, extension contract. Um, they are, when they bid this project, um, they bid it uh, based on the conditions of the time that the project was, the beach nourishment project was commencing and the, um, they bid it with the hope, I guess, that they'd be able to use the um, material that was put in place as part of the beach nourishment um, project to be able to work on that sand to extend the outfalls. Um, as a result of some of the equilibration and some subsequent storms, that material isn't in place um, to the degree it needs to be for them to build the project as they had originally proposed. Therefore, their change order is requesting a steel trestle um, to be built and put in place so that they can have a platform by which to work from. Um, their request is for a change to the means and methods. Um, that change order amount uh, comes to $167,818 uh, $167, uh, <clears throat> and that increases the original contract price from about 1.3 to 1.5 and that, that all those figures also include the $17,000 for the um, the demo work that you approved at your last meeting. Um, that still puts this project well below the second and third bids. It puts it uh, considerably below those bids. Um, in an effort to try and uh, reduce the cost as much as possible, at, at the time, we, if, if Board may remember, uh, when we were discussing the need to get these outfalls extended um, because of the beach nourishment project, we we discussed whether or not we needed to uh, also install because the park service outfall was not a part the beach nourishment project did not go that far we discussed quite extensively whether or not we needed to extend that outfall that we, we felt at the time that eventually the sand would migrate that direction and while we were working to in, uh, extend three we might as well go ahead and extend the fourth How, however in an effort to save um, to reduce some of this cost we are um, we worked extensively with the uh, contractor to try and get this cost down and we've determined that we were comfortable in, in recommending and agreeing with this um, change order to to not extend the sounds or excuse me the park service at McCall court the park service outfall at this time it's operating it's working um, and it's not something we feel like we need to extend now um, but we do feel that this change order is, um, while we, we're never pleased about recommending a change order to you, um, we feel that we've worked as best we could to get through this process to get to this point and 
um, have this change order before you asking for your approval. Cliff, would you say that this change order is the best way to get this project completed before yes. turtle season? A absolutely. Turtle season starts April 1st, and I'm glad. Thank you for saying that. The other thing that this does is we had a March 8th deadline. Um, this also extends that uh, contract completion date to April 1st, which is um, the time in which U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the, the turtle season begins. The Corps is aware of this. Uh, CAMA is aware of this, DOT is aware of this, and they've all signed off on this as a acceptable means and methods of constructing this. Given that this contractor has made a lot of assumptions that have not proved to be valid on this contract, what assurance do we have that will be completed by April 1st? Uh, um, and what's the alternative if it's not? The, the, here's how we're going forward with this. We've got two outfalls now that we are comfortable, the, the one at Conk and the one at Curlew, they're working two crews to work until midnight to make sure that they're putting their best effort to get this project completed. Um, best case scenario, I think, is that, you know, there, there are, going back to what Dave said, the assurances, I'd love to be able to tell you, I promise they'll get done, but you know, uh, hopefully you know I'm smarter. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we've, 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 we can get the one at Soundside to operate if, if we had to. It, it, it haven't, they haven't gotten to that point yet where they have done any construction there. I feel very sure that they'll get Conk and Curlew done. Um, my, my, assurance, my level of assurance goes down as you go south. Um, but we can get, as of right now, we can get the one at Soundside to operate if, if, if it had to, to be. So we can go out and, and pop a hole at the end of it and get it to operate. Other than them working two shifts um, and the, meet, the meetings that we've had to sit down with their attorney and our attorney, um, that's that's all the assurance I have and that I can offer. Is, as part of this change order, is there a performance bond? That is in place. That there is a performance and payment bond in place. So how much will they forfeit if they don't get done by April 1st. Well, part of the assurance is money. I mean, if the job's not done, they hopefully won't be paid. But the bigger problem is the drainage. If the pipes are blocked, you know, we've got a huge problem back there. Um, so they're moving right along now. Progress is really moving forward. Um, I, I have faith that Carolina Marine is going to finish the job. Uh, I go out there every day. So I'm getting to know these guys pretty well. They've got a construction technique down pat now. Um, that they're using, they're putting sheet piles, they're basically blocking off the, the sand in the water with metal things that they bury in the ground and they put sections of pipe in and they pick up those sh sheetings and they install it a little further east and they, they plug their way out. They should be done with Curlew. He's telling me by Friday. Um, based on the progress that's been made within the past week, I believe him. And they're already starting to work. They've done the demolition work at Comp by pulling out some of the old infrastructure. And so Friday, Saturday, they, they should be mobilizing down there. We've had a lot of discussion with them. Uh, the contract was set to expire in January. And there's been a long time since it was awarded in September. Um, that discussion's for another day. <laughs> but they've got the, the impetus to get this thing done. They, disturb two outfalls and then work kind of slowed down. Um, we're all on the same page now. This change order gives them the leverage they need to get out in the water and construct this thing. And our priority are those two, two outfalls that are under construction right now to get those two done before we go down to the next outfall and disturb that. Point out one other item of that change order. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Valdivieso, Mr. Ogre were clever enough to negotiate that you all will retain the materials that you, for the Park Service outfall within the, this price. So you will have those materials at your disposal if you ever decide to do that at a later date as part of this change order. The work's not being done, but you all will retain the materials which have already been purchased by the contractor. Other questions on this outfall project change order? 
entertain a motion. Move uh, move approved request is presented. I'll second that motion. Uh, discussion? All those in favor of motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. Please get these done. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, the request for the uh, discussion on the um, acquisition of property, those addresses are 3006 South Virginia Dare Trail, 3005 South Pro 10 Highway, 7740 South Virginia Dare Trail, uh, 7304 South Virginia Dare Trail, and then property we've uh, identified as the uh, old post office lots, approximately five acres between the highways at mile post 13. And that's all I have. Um, let's go through our board agenda if we may. Uh, and then we'll have a closed session event. Uh, Commissioner Romano? Mm -hmm. No. No, thank you. No? no? Only that CRC met here last week, and one of the major items on the agenda was presented by staff a draft policy to send out for public review on sea level rise. It was defeated um, because it was incomplete. And until the science panel gets back with some historical data, not projected data, um, I don't think you'll see a policy adopted. There was a question about the public comment being 15 minutes on the agenda. Um, and the answer to that is, no matter how many people sign up for public comment, you do public comment until it's over. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we did uh, put some budget proposed budget workshop dates uh, on the calendar on the agenda. We've got Monday, April 16th at three. Wednesday, April 18th at five with a mid-month meeting starting at seven. We have had an objection to that one. That's a long day. Uh, Wednesday, May 9th at three. Wednesday, May 16th. Tuesday, May 22nd at five. Wednesday, May 30th at three. And then our, our final budget public hearing, or the first budget public hearing on June 6th. Any, uh, any comments on any of the dates? As you and I talked earlier, I'm going to comment on the one with mid-month. I had a struggle getting here at 7. I'm not sure I can finish my day and be here at 5 all the way through the mid-month meeting. And I think that's a long day for staff as well, to go straight from their work day at 5 to a budget workshop and then a mid-month meeting. Would y'all like to, to back up the calendar a little bit, put, put another meeting in early April? Is that – Cliff, any, any suggestions? Um, if, if you're agreeable to an April 16th, I think that that would give us the ability to start. Commissioner Romali is shaking his head. Mayor President we, Romali has. Week the 16th, I'll be in Jamaica. You lucky devil, you. <laughs> We're crying for you. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's I the 16th and 18th proposals there. I guess what I was asking was if could we back up to the week before that? Will you all be able we'll, to, to we'll be, be ready for that? Yeah. Sam, Monday and Wednesday at three and five. So you're proposing the ninth and the eleventh. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Without looking at my calendar, I have. Um, I have scrolled down. That's right. Oh. And that is Easter week, so. As long as everybody's planning on going on Easter vacation. We had set the Monday one, the ninth at three, and the Wednesday one at five, if that suits everybody. Good. Um, the other item I had was the, the, there's a proposed speed limit change. Kittle Hills has asked for a speed limit change on 158 from 50 down to, I think they asked for 35. I don't think they'll get 35, but there's possible, <laughs> it's possible that they'll get 45. Uh, from Collington to the town line, 
uh, I think our concern was going from 45 and then back up to 50 at the town line. And I think Cliff's su proposal, suggestion on that was if they were going to do that and we wanted to go along with it, that we would extend that 45 limit down to the end of the Nags Head Elementary School zone. Is that yes, sir. fairly stated? Yes, sir. I guess two things. Do, is that a, a reasonable solution? And do we want to oppose the whole speed limit change? Uh, you, you had a, a good comment. <laughs> I don't think speed, I don't think the accident that's caused this has anything to do with speed. It has to do with people driving without a license. But I think speed is going to be determined by traffic flow. I think if you have less traffic, you're going to have faster traffic. The more traffic you have, the slower you have. Um, I think they'll probably get something, but I would totally oppose a 35 mile speed limit on 158. I think that's not what that road was built for. And the amount of curb cuts we all have allowed on the 158 has created part of the problem. If we had put in a divided highway, we wouldn't be having this problem. DOT has said that they would they would not agree to a 35, but if, if Kilover Hills passes an ordinance requesting them to lower it to 45, that they would do so. That's the law. If there's a dispute over speed limit. Mm -hmm. If, if the DOT and the municipalities have a dispute over speed limit, it goes to 45 regardless. It goes to the lower of the it two? Goes to, well, it's not going to go to 35. The rule says it goes to 45, and that's the end of the discussion. So, I mean... Do we need to make this decision yet? No, ma'am. This is more information. Let's see... Uh, I guess it's appropriate time for uh, burning into a closed session to consider acquisition of real property, and that was the real property that Cliff listed, the addresses we listed earlier. Um, I'm going to ask you for the and proper to, statutes to discuss all right. potential litigation. To discuss potential litigation. Uh, I guess real property is GS 143-318.11, parenthesis A, parenthesis 5. And entertain a motion to close the closed session for those purposes. Second. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. We're going to recess for a closed session. <laughs> what is it called? We're going to come back into open session. I'll uh, ask our attorney, Mr. Hornthal, to report out from the closed session. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you will report out the actions from the closed session. Yes. Uh, we discussed pending litigation. Well, we'll strike that. We discussed uh, potential litigation. Um, and the board voted to authorize the staff to make an offer on real property. Thank you very much, sir. Is there any further business to come for the board this evening? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 This uh, meeting is adjourned.